In your headlines, Honorable Ralph Higgs pledges to donate his inflation stimulus to his alma mater. And the TCI International Airport is undergoing a nine-month redevelopment consultancy exercise. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to PCV Newswatch. Thanks for tuning in on this Thursday, July 28, 2022. I'm Khalees Williams with today's newscast. The real news starts now. Former minister and member of the People's Democratic Movement, Honorable Ralph Higgs, has pledged to donate his inflation stimulus to his alma mater. He calls on residents who are not in dire need to do the same. Former Minister Honorable Ralph Higgs says he hopes that his donation and gesture will not be misconstrued, as he is no more prosperous than the majority of the 15% to 20% of Turks and Caicos Islanders who do not need the $1,000 stimulus. The former Minister of Tourism says he will be donating his stimulus check to his alma mater, now the Raymond Gardner High School, ahead of the distribution process, and hopes that administrators can make good use of the donation ahead of the opening of the new academic year. In a sudden twist, Higgs went on to suggest that there are persons like himself who are not in need of the stimulus and that $2.5 million allotment could have easily went to other projects. Quote, if this government truly wants to help Turks and Caicos Islanders, it should find meaningful ways to uplift our people. Instead of giving out $2.5 million of the $16 million stimulus package to people who don't need it, TCIG could have used this amount to provide an additional $500 on the stimulus checks to those who do need the help. Now is unquestionably the moment to invest in progressive community activities. Spending more money on those who need it the most is real investment for real people with real needs." End quote. He suggested that the monies could have been put toward beautifying Providenciales, the launch of the technical school, or a sports track in North Caicos, Grand Turk or South Caicos. He also declared the need for long-range drones as part of the border defense system, which he says would in turn save the country millions more. Higgs went on to request that other Turks and Caicos Islanders, not in need of the $1,000, join him in giving back by donating to charities of their choice or to, quote, come together and choose meaningful national impacting projects, which we should insist TCIG spend our money on in this fiscal year given that they have the money, end quote. Newswatch learns that the inflation stimulus checks will begin printing next week and should see the distribution process launched shortly thereafter. The Providenciales International Airport redevelopment is a nine-month consultancy exercise which kicked off late last week with a stakeholders meeting with ALG consultants. Details in this report. The construction of a new world-class terminal at the Providenciales International Airport will get underway in February 2023. Phase 1 of the project involves the consultancy, which is being undertaken by ALG consultants. Representatives of the agency met with stakeholders, government officials and airport executives last Thursday to present a preliminary plan for the upgrade of the airport in terms of the scope of the work and how the project can be financed. In June, the consultants had their first site visit in the islands, meeting with officials and representatives of industries to begin their preliminary work. Last week, the consultants conducted various workshops with the advisory panel and key stakeholders to enable them to move into the next stage of their work, which includes a market analysis, which will in turn enable the government to prepare tenders for the work to be done. The Providenciales International Airport redevelopment is probably going to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest, project uh, and the most important uh, project uh, that will take place in Turks and Caicos for the next 25 to 40 years. Um, I think we all agree that the project or the airport as it is today um, is basically past its, its lifespan. In other words, it's not, um, it's, it's, I, I think we, we, in terms of sort of a return on investment, uh, I, I think it's probably produced the greatest return on investment of any airport in the world, <laughs> right? Um, given what we've got there and what we've been able to do with it. 
Um, and, but time has passed. This is the 21st century. We have been selling ourselves and in fact boasting about uh, being a five-star destination. And so if we're going to be a five-star destination and mean our assets and everything we do, the service delivery um, and the infrastructure, uh, public and private, uh, um, actually has to fit that, that model. Mar Simon, principal for ALG Consultants, gave a comprehensive overview of the proposed redevelopment as per their findings. It's important for you to know that everything is clear, transparent. Uh, we want to have the best opinions included into the project. So this is why we are here today. My name is Mar, M-A-R, like the C, just for you to know. And with me is Paula. She is our airport planning specialist. We have been working during the last two months in this project, uh, trying to create value for you, right? So for, for today we are going to present both the market, how we see the market, how the traffic will be forecast for the next 30 years, how this could be, we, how we foreseen the market in the next year. Because at the end, this island is mainly focused on tourism, and the traffic of the airport is key for, for use. The session was a very interactive one, with attendees questioning the consultants and airport executives about the work to be done. One of the questions was what will be done in the short term while these extensive works are being undertaken to redevelop the Providenciales Airport. The short term plan. Well, the biggest problem that we have, we know, is capacity. The short term plan is to um, literally move the airlines from upstairs. Um, the airlines take up about 55, near 60 percent of the space upstairs now. Um, we want to move them downstairs to a, a building, a quick fix building out front of the terminal. Uh, well, front end, I think that's east. Um, and they will fit in there. Um, I must say that the space will not be optimum for all of the airlines but we will have to try to um, uh, mitigate that as best we could. Um, but that we see that as probably the biggest issue that we have um, for the um, upcoming season. You can see from the projections that um, the, and if we are lucky and we continue to be good, um, the passenger throughput is not gonna let up. Uh, I think it's by, Fosa is not here. I think it's mid-August, the building should be on the ground, and um, we should also, in a matter of uh, maybe a month, a month and a half, be able to erect it. Uh, we do have some clearances that we have to um, um, to um, um, vet, get. Uh, we have the logistics of moving and the timing of moving from upstairs to downstairs. So that's the immediate um, um, bit to do with that. The second thing, or probably most important, is the canopy. It is probably about 25% of the initial work is done, um, ground works, steel works. Uh, I think that is scheduled to be done around October, November time to be completed. And um, that will take up most of the international arrivals and departures. It also mitigates a security issue that we have passengers um, mitigating or mixing on the, um, on the um, um, terminal or the terminal pathway. Uh, still have the domestic side of the airport that we still have to um, find ways to. And you can see one of the plans is whether we put in a second and a third um, modularized buildings or so to accommodate um, the things like the carousels and that kind of thing. It's not an issue that we know that we have to deal with in some ways or the other, but that's a decision that has to go down the road. So I think those are two of the biggest immediate um, effects that we, we um, are engaging. The consultancy will provide a full suite of options to the TCI government and the airport authority on moving forward with the location of a new airport, the development of the present facility, as well as options for financing. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Als. Prison escapee and rape accused Johnny Adescat is free today after court proceedings found loopholes in the prosecution's case against the defendant. Newswatch has the latest. A 26-year-old Haitian national, Johnny Adescat, also known as Pastor, is released from police custody 
after the implementation of a stay in a court case in which it was alleged that he assaulted and raped a young girl back in 2018. Adiscat walked free after the three-week trial in which the Supreme Court implemented a stay on the legal proceedings. And here's why. The public prosecutor, Nayesha Hatman, would argue that the accused, Adiscat, committed two counts of rape and one count of indecent assault. However, his attorney, Shana Mayer, would discover a serious legal loophole in the trial. Mayer argued an unfair trial of her client as the complainant at one point disputed that she said things in her statement, as well as a degree of contamination of interpretations. It would appear that laws and provisions of ordinances were broken as it relates to the use of independent interpreters and prohibitions of one lone body conducting such interpretations for a particular case's complainant, witnesses, and defendants. This resulted in a stay of the proceedings and the release of Johnny Adiscat from police custody. Back in May 2021, Adiscat also led police on a nationwide hunt after he escaped Her Majesty's prison. He was brought in weeks later. We'll be right back with more News Watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providence Chalice, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. It's that time of year again. Lobster season is coming back soon in full swing in the TCI, and Newswatch has the details on what guidelines are in place for the upcoming season. In an official press release on their Facebook page, the TCIG announced to the general public, restaurants, and fishing interests should be aware that lobster season will officially kick off on Monday, August 1st, and go until March 31st, 2023. In the press release, the TCIG listed restrictions related to crawfish as per Section 15 of the Fisheries Protection Ordinance. The list is as follows. In relation to crawfish size restrictions, when whole, a length of 3.25 inches measured from the front of the groove between the horns directly above the eyes along the middle of the back to the rear edge of the back shell, or, when the tail has been separated, a tail weight of 5 ounces whether processed or not. Fishers are not to be in the possession of any egg-bearing crawfish. Fishers are not to remove eggs from egg-bearing crawfish. Fishers are not to take or be in possession of molting crawfish or crawfish in early stages of spawning, described as appearing tar-spotted. Fishers are to ensure that the crawfish are landed unharmed and whole after being taken and landed at processing plants or at home, unless processed at sea, as per the terms of the processing license. Fishers, as well as fish processing plants, are advised to adhere to COVID-19 guidelines pertaining to social distancing. The FMRM encourages residents and visitors to familiarize themselves with the fishery regulations and to uphold them, and they also urge responsible citizens to contact them at 338-4171 to report any violations that may occur. The Mediation Center for the TCI was officially opened on July 15, 2022. Here's more. 
Today, July 15th, 2022, the Judiciary of the Turks and Caicos unveiled the new Mediation and Restoration Center at Emily House on Leeward Highway in Providenciales. The event happened at 10 a.m. and multiple ministers and members of the Judiciary were in attendance. The event kicked off with Reverend Frederick Brathwaite leading in prayer, followed by remarks from the Acting Governor, Her Excellency Anya Williams. I am pleased to be here today to support the Judiciary of the Turks and Caicos Islands in the commissioning of the Mediation Center. I wish to commend the Judiciary, in particular Madam Chief Justice, on the reforms that she's leading aimed at improving our judicial system here in the Turks and Caicos Islands. The Honorable Attorney General Rhonda Lee Brathwaite Knowles was next up to the podium speaking about the astounding job the Honorable Chief Justice Mabel M. Ajamang has been doing. My lady, you are certainly keeping um, being faithful to that, that mission that you were called by the Judicial Service Commission um, not very long ago. And as the um, Honorable, the, as Her Excellency, the Acting Governor, has indicated, we have seen almost a transformation um, of our justice system in the islands as a result of the efforts that have been led by our Honorable Chief Justice. Director of Public Prosecutions, Mr. Eugene Otunye, spoke about the training provided to court-collected mediators. Training on the rules followed on September 20, 2021. Three weeks earlier, the first batch of court-connected mediators completed their rigorous training, ready to mediate in civil matters with the court-connected mediation rules that came into force on the 15th of October, 2021. This was followed by the restorative justice, rigorous training for practitioners in restorative justice process in April, 2022. The Honorable Chief Justice Mabel M. Ajame then went on to explain what the Mediation Center stands for and its use. The Mediation Center is dedicated to the use of persons throughout the islands who wish to have their disputes mediated, as well as victims of and persons impacted by crime who seek to achieve healing and closure through the victim offender mediation referred to as restorative justice providing comfort to allow for meaningful mediation of disputes as well as the facilitation of the restorative process. Provided in this space for the use of mediators, facilitators and parties are two conference rooms equipped with electronic capability, an office for a mental health practitioner who may need to assess the suitability of cases for the restorative process, an office for mediators and facilitators where they will prepare for the sessions by reading through the briefs assigned to them. An office for the ADR administrator who will assist mediators and facilitators and parties. A notice board that will provide information on mediation dates and other information. Don't move just yet. Coming up next is your weather forecast after this break. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza, Providenciales, Midis Plaza, North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotia Bank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation.
here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We are creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, partly cloudy skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. For South Caicos, partly cloudy skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, sunshine and mixed clouds, High 85, low 79, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. And on Providenciales, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Here's your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise, 6:21 a.m. Sunset. 7.31 p.m. Now for your high and low tides. High tide, 8.58 a.m., 9.11 p.m. Low tides, 2.59 a.m., 2.52 p.m. And for your hurricane outlook, for the North Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico, tropical cyclone formation is not expected during the next five days. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. That's the end of today's edition of Newswatch, but don't forget you can always catch us on our website at www.ptv8tci.com and every weekday right here at 6.30 p.m. I'm Kalise Williams. Stay informed. Thanks for watching. <laughs>